What's up guys? It's Jason Rafferty here with Drawing Demos. How to think about shading. I'm going to show you guys how to break down shading. And I underlined think in the title because a lot of folks when they're starting out drawing, um, they are obsessed with shading. They want to get to the shading. I know it's like a really exciting part of drawing. It's a lot of fun to really start bringing something to life to make it 3D. Um, but I want to show you guys a really strategic way how to break down shading conceptually so that you will know exactly what needs to be done at every single uh, point in the drawing. You'll be able to observe something and say, hey, I know what I'm looking at. So let's break it down. I've started out by drawing a light source there, just that cone up there is just an indicator for our light source. We're going to be doing a single light source. This first line that I'm drawing, we call it the terminator. It's also just the shadow line. It's going to be the line that separates light and shadow. Okay, so the first step in the drawing is to make a line drawing as accurately as you can and separate light and shadow just with the, a simple line to start like I've done there. And now you can start to wash in a simple shadow shape. Okay, and for some styles of drawing, this is all you need. Some styles that are very simple, if you're just doing a quick sketch, you can really just find light and shadow, separate them very clearly, and keep it nice and flat, shading the entire shadow area initially. One kind of very uniform value. You can see I'm still hatching in though. I'm, I'm doing it kind of in a deliberate way where I'm changing the directions of my strokes here and just lightly, smoothly hatching in a simple uh, single value for the entire shadow shape initially, okay? This is really important and I, I'm just gonna repeat it. Okay, single value for the entire shadow shape. I'm not getting caught up in a lot of details early on with, oh, you know, the shadow, there's so many degrees of darkness. No, we're just gonna go and unify the shadows. There's a cast shadow that the spear is going to be casting that's a bit different than the shadow on the form of the spear, which we call form shadow. But initially, I'm going to unify this cast shadow and form shadow into one value range. Just keep them all unified, okay? So that's the beginning. And then we're going to start gradually building up the shading on the spear and just going in a gradient that gets darker as we get closer to the shadow line or the terminator. And we're going to be building up what's called the core shadow now. Okay, so it gets darker as it goes towards the shadow line because there is reflected light that is bouncing into the sphere from the object that it is sitting on. Okay, in this case we're imagining it's sitting on a table. I didn't draw in the table. I should have. Um, but the reason that the area of the shadow is lighter as it gets towards the edge of the spear in this case is because we're imagining reflected light bouncing into the shadow. It's creating a luminous shadow. So I'm just very gradually shading up to the shadow line making it darker and darker and this takes some time. We don't want to rush. We don't want to overdo it. Okay, we're just going to gradually steep the shadow in a nice smooth gradient of darkness. You see I paused here just to show you this is uh, what we're trying to do. We're keeping light and shadow separated. We're not thinking about the light side just yet. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing with my cash out. Or just add a little bit of variety to it. We're going to make it darker as it gets closer to underneath the object. Okay, back to the form shadow here. Just darkening gradually. Okay, and this is a good setup. This is our shadow side, just smoothing things out a little bit more, but we're going from core shadow into the reflected light, back into the core shadow, and just smoothing out this gradient gradually building up the density of the shadow. That's looking like a pretty good setup. 
we're going to now talk about the light side of an object. I tend to break it down into two, uh, well three if you count the highlight um, areas. Okay, so we have darker light, lighter light, and the highlight. We're going to start with the darker light area. This is the area of light that is the darker area in the uh, range of the light side. It's so pretty self-explanatory. So we're seeing how it just gradually melds into the shadow side, kind of steps in very gradually, very faintly, but we're treating it with a noticeably lighter hand than the shadow side because it is on the light side. We want to really keep them separated for the viewer to make it very obvious. Darker light is not shadow. Okay, so we're keeping the shadow side distinctive you can see I go back in to kind of reestablish the shadow line now that we're starting to shade into it a little bit and get a little fuzzy. We still want it to be pretty clear, okay? So I'm just going to go back in here and refine, reestablish the shadow, just build a little bit more shadow mass onto that. It's important to uh, gradually build up the entire drawing as a sort of a unified entity, if that makes sense. So. I've stepped away from the darker light for a minute, just continuing to refine the shadow. And then I'm gonna kind of nurse that edge a little bit more, just gradually smoothing it out um, while not being too smooth. Um, we're, we're trying to make it feel like one degree at a time, it's stepping uh, darker or lighter, depending on if it's in the shadow side or the light side. So. We're gonna just very, very faintly continue to refine our shading. We're back into the darker light side now. And you can see I'm hatching with the direction of the form. I'm actually moving the angle of my pencil and following the contour of the form. And you can see I'm just accentuating that, that I'm following the form as I'm moving the pencil. And that's an important, um, it'll help you to feel the form that you're moving on. If you can just kind of alter the direction of your pencil as you go, mimicking the direction of the form, the illusion of the form that you're trying to develop. Okay, and you can see that I'm adding faint uh, touches of shading. I'm now going to the lighter light side. Uh, it's You can see I, it's over that, that little line that I wrote, I, I drew in the light side to divide uh, darker light and lighter light. And I'm just very, very faintly shading now that we're into the lighter light. Um, but we're still having a tiny little bit of shading because this is a white page. So that little dot in the light side is going to be the highlight. It's a distinctive part of the spear. In this demo, I don't uh, really develop it. I, I, might, I think I erase it a little bit later on. Um, but the highlight is a reflection of the light source and it moves around the most of all of the form um, shadow and light. So highlight is, is kind of a separate thing. If we're painting, we paint it, we paint it more thickly. Uh, we, we, we treat it kind of separately. So you just kind of keep that in mind. The highlight is, is going to be its own separate thing. The form shadow, again, it can be broken down into shadow and light, bam, and then within those, on the shadow side, you have the core shadow and the reflected light. And on the light side, you have darker light and lighter light. Okay, that's four, um, that's four categories, and that's, that's it. And then you have cast shadow, which is the shadow that the object is casting onto the object that it is sitting on. Okay, in this case, it's the cast shadow of the sphere and the highlight which is the reflection of the light source. If this were tone paper, I would treat the highlight with a white chalk, kind of just a dab of white chalk. But as it's not, I'm keeping it white on the page. Okay, and that's about, um, it's about it. I, uh, it's like, how long, how long does he keep going, right? So you, you can see, you can be, you can get kind of obsessive um, with this spear here. Um, it, it's kind of nice, it's kind of a meditative thing to just stick with it for a while and, and really just push yourself to refine, refine, refine. And here we go, I'm finally going in to just kind of lightly uh, erase out the highlight a little bit. Um, 
but we're just looking for a very gradual gradation that we really we can spend some time and really just uh, nursing it into being and, and we're just the last thing I'm doing here is just just adding a bit more darkness to the core shadow it really really can help it to pop to come out but see how much uh, light and luminosity is still left in the reflected light side of the shadow that's really important okay a lot of people make shadows too dark they're too heavy-handed with them when really it's just it's just a moment of the shadow that's pretty dark and then the rest of it is gradually also very very luminous I feel like that should be a some kind of a message there's light in the darkness I don't know whatever um, but anyway this is this is kind of the fun part about um, treating shading is seeing seeing the reflected light within the shadow that's what I love and just getting that shadow's edge so it's really really a mel almost melts from light into shadow it's really fun okay guys so that's a little bit of uh, pointers about how to think about drawing and shading uh, with a spear I hope that is helpful go out and draw a spear go shade some stuff have fun thanks guys